So let me define what we mean when we speak about torque. First thing worth noting is that torque is a vector quantity. Torque has units of newton meters and torque is symbolized by the Greek letter tau. So here's a formula for you to help define torque. We say torque as a vector is equal to a lever arm cross product with some amount of force. An example would be if you had a, a bolt that you were trying to make tight. So a lot of our bolts are hexagonal. So we've got a hex bolt and a wrench. And if you try to make something tight, righty-tighty, you might push on the wrench in this direction. And so you apply a force vector. Now we're going to spend more time defining what we mean by the vector r than f. I think f is pretty clear. Any push or pull measured in newtons represents a force. The r in this equation we refer to as a lever arm. And the lever arm is measured in units of meters. And it's a vector quantity, just like force is a vector quantity. And because we're multiplying the two together, we've noted that we're not taking a dot product. In fact, we've seen that before. The dot product of force, a quantity measured in newtons, with a quantity measured in meters, although we didn't call it lever arm in this case, we might have called it displacement. When we took the dot product of force and displacement, we calculated work. Here, we're taking the cross product of force and lever arm. So lever arm is defined as the distance from the axis of rotation. So if this bolt is going to rotate, it's going to rotate at a, about a point at its center. So the lever arm is measured from the axis of rotation all the way to the point where the force is being applied. So you see we have two quantities that can be represented as arrows, so they're both vector quantities, and we're taking the cross product. In this case, the angle between them happens to be 90 degrees. So the cross product is maximized if the angle between the force and the lever arm is equal to 90, and the torque is 0 if the angle is either 0 degrees or 180 degrees. In fact, the magnitude of the torque, which can be expressed with this notation, is just equal to the amount of force times the length of the lever arm multiplied by the sine of the angle formed between the two. So let's look at this another way. If you've ever changed your own flat tire, then you know the lug nuts that you have to take off the car can be pretty stubborn. So let's picture this lug nut as one of many of the lug nuts on the rim of your vehicle. And you put the wrench on which is often not necessarily pointing out horizontally. And then if you try to grab it with your hand, it's too hard to twist, so people will take their foot. And they'll actually stomp onto the wrench. So they apply a force that's directed straight down. And there's a lever arm in this case that points from the axis of rotation to where the force is applied. And so the angle between the two is something other than 90 degrees. We'll call it theta. So there's a vector r, a vector f, and some angle. What we could do is picture this 
as in a simplified way. That dot is the same as the axis of rotation. That line represents our lever arm, R. And then I'm going to make an X at the point where the force is applied and extend my lever arm as an X axis and make a line that's perpendicular to that. So we have a Y axis. And you could see our original force would have pointed downward in this direction. So I'm going to replace that with its vector components. So there's clearly a component to this downward force that points along the negative x-axis. And there's a component to this force F. We'll say that's F parallel to the lever arm. And there's another component to the force here. And we'll say that's the amount of force perpendicular to the lever arm. And it turns out this component of the force provides no torque. But this component is the one that provides all the torque. So torque is equal to the perpendicular component of the force multiplied by lever arm. But the perpendicular component, if we define this angle as theta, is nothing more than the original force, F, multiplied by the sine of that angle. So this is where the expression magnitude of torque is force times lever arm times sine of the angle comes from. I'm actually associating the force with the sine as a way of getting the perpendicular component of the force to the lever arm. So magnitude of torque is F sine theta times R, or if you prefer, F R sine theta. That's just the magnitude. What about direction? So the direction is given by something known as the right hand rule. If you, um, well, recognize that stomping this way, oh, we've actually got this in reverse, don't we? This would be the way to tighten your lug nuts when you put the wheel back on, right? If we had another bolt that we were trying to make loose and our wrench stuck out this way and we stomped on it, then that would make the rotation go counterclockwise, or what we call lefty-loosey, I guess. Here, this is an example of righty-tighty. I don't make these things up. Clockwise rotation. So if you use your right hand and you curl the fingers of your right hand in a clockwise direction, your thumb would point away from you, and we say that's the direction of the torque vector. So in our example of putting the lug nut back on after you've re replaced your tire, the clockwise rotation is a torque vector that points into the page. Whereas a counterclockwise, if you use your right hand and you curl your fingers of your right hand in a counterclockwise direction, your thumb should be pointing directly toward you. Or we'd say the torque vector points out of the page. Okay, so there's one method for finding the amount of force and then the direction is always given by, oops, the right hand, the right hand rule. Now there's another way to calculate torque. So I suppose I'm saying by definition three lines of my equal sign. We define torque as a vector cross product between a lever arm and a force. Torque also happens to be equal to the time rate of change of angular momentum, where angular momentum is the product of some 
object's rotational inertia and its angular speed. Now, remember, this is very much like saying linear momentum is mass times velocity. So I'm just stating an analogous equation, although it might look new to you. So if we use the product rule for derivatives, we find that torque is equal to rotational inertia times the time rate of change of angular speed plus angular speed multiplied by the time rate of change of rotational inertia. Well, we'll limit ourselves for now to examples where rotational inertia is constant, therefore the rate of change of rotational inertia is equal to zero and this whole term goes away. So now you recognize what this is equal to. The derivative of angular speed measured in radians per second gives us angular acceleration measured in radians per second squared. So perhaps we should say torque is equal to I alpha. And you see this looks very similar to F equals MA. So these analogous equations keep popping up. And in the same way that F equals MA really means the sum of all external force equals MA, I think we mean the sum of all external torque equals I alpha. So which is the right way to say it? Are we supposed to say that torque is I alpha? Or are we supposed to say torque is equal to R cross F? Well, it turns out they're both correct, and in some of the upcoming lessons you'll see how we can apply these equations to various situations.